I recall even in my own growing up, Rastafarians were not accepted per se as ordinary citizens. Eventually I joined the force and I recall that um, in our shooting range, the targets were oftentimes the image of a Rasta man with locks placed there. And in our mind, that was the look of a criminal. And so we would use those images as targets. The Coral Gardens incident, also known as the Coral Gardens atrocities, the Coral Gardens massacre, the Coral Gardens riot, and Bad Friday, refers to a series of events that occurred in Jamaica from April 11th to 13th in 1963, following a violent altercation at a gas station in Montego Bay. Jamaican police and military forces detained Rastafarians throughout Jamaica, killing and torturing many. Exact numbers are not available, but estimates place the number of detained individuals as high as 150. In April 2017, following a legal investigation, the government of Jamaica issued an official apology and condemned its own actions in the incident. It also established a trust fund to aid survivors who were armed in the incident. The years prior to the Coral Gardens incident saw the building of tensions between the Rastafarian community and the British colonial government in Jamaica. In 1958, British police engaged in several arrests and evictions of Rastafarians, often bringing to bear charges for the possession of cannabis, which is used as a Rastafarian religious sacrament. Several of these incidences resulted in police killings of Rastafarians, and some of those arrested were reportedly never seen again. Due to alleged violence on the part of the Rastafarians and public discourse, which emphasized antisocial aspects of the Rastafarian faith, public opinion in Jamaica largely sided with the police against the Rastafarians. In 1959, a confrontation between a Rastafari security guard and a policeman at Coronation Market resulted in the police beating the security guard, 
which prompted a violent response from nearby shop owners. And one morning, no one pushed a car, I walked like a contract, go to Alpha. Come from Alpha, I see a crowd in Coronation Market. When I look and ask why, them say a Rasta man who sweep in the market. Police beat him up and then carry him gone up hospital, public hospital. So when the policeman then come down there, then catch all the rest of them and then buy their nuts, so you know, and hold them, you know, and put on some thing and buy the stick and them, you know, the button, and catch them drum, and step in at the drum and throw all the drum, them in a fire. And we start to run, we have to run for them because they have tear gas. The police brought reinforcements, arresting 57 Rastafarians and brutally beating and forcibly shaving the dreadlocks off of some of them. A police car and a fire truck were also set on fire during the incident. Later that year, Rastafari leader Reverend Claudius Henry was accused of plotting a revolution and communicating with Fidel Castro. In 1960, Henry's son, Renault, was arrested on the grounds of plotting a revolt, and following a declaration of state of emergency, Renault Henry and his co-conspirators were executed. The following year came uh, Reverend Claudius Henry's um, decision day on October 5th, 1958, which was decision day when uh, the world would see the miraculous repatriation to Africa. Well, um, that created a crisis only for Henry's group. Many other people um, not belonging to his organization, which was the, called the African Reform Church, uh, had attached themselves to his movement in the expectation that they would be repatriated. People come from all over the country, apparently. Then came 1960 events, Henry again, when he um, was found with arms and a letter uh, to Fidel Castro inviting the Castro government to come to Jamaica to take over uh, this country as they depart uh, for Africa. Following these events, the government began to arbitrarily arrest members of the Rastafari community under the justification that Rastafarians were in orchestrating a communist revolution. In 1962, Jamaica would win its independence, but anti-Rastafarian sentiment continued to be prevalent in the government and police forces, which increasingly viewed the Rastafarians as a security threat. In police training schools, Officers would often train using images of Rastafarians as target practice. This sentiment was echoed in general society as well, with Rastafarians often being beaten by civilians, forcing Rastafarians to avoid public spaces. Coral Gardens was part of a larger property, the Rose Hall Estate, which includes the Rose Hall Mansion. This property was the site of both small-scale farming by Rastafarians as well as the ambitions of landlords and government officials who hoped to convert the area into a tourist destination. The government and landlords saw the Rastafarians as an obstacle to their goal of repurposing the property for tourism and frequently sent police to evict the Rastafarians. In one such incident in 1961, police attacked Rudolph Franklin, shooting him six times in the stomach and leaving him for dead. At that time, was very, a very popular youngster among the Rastafarians group in Jamaica. Rudolph's father died and leave a, a lot out of Carl Garden. We didn't go on that now. Uh, no. He start chopping down, chopping down and burn coal and they then make them start farm till they get the land clear now then start farm. After they start farm now, Rosal manager, they send workers over there to check what the man they do. But then say, Rosal, then they pan. 
So after them go there and check you out and come back the news to the, to the manager. Say then they farm this and then they farm that. Then say all right. Then they set up the good when the project start reap. When they start reap the project now, then carry a battalion of police good there. And when they go to the battalion of police good there, then chop down, they, they reap, they reap, what they, what they reap, pumpkin, melon, every little thing what, what they see, they reap it, reap it. And after they reap, you know, then the order to chop it down and then chop it down. Franklin received a plastic surgery in a hospital to repair his stomach, but was reportedly told by a doctor that once the plastic rotted, his wound would reopen and he would die. Following his surgery, Franklin was immediately arrested on the grounds of cannabis possession and sentenced to six months in prison. After his release from prison, Franklin reportedly swore to take revenge against the overseer who had attempted to evict him, Edward Fowler. Accounts differ as to the specifics of what happened on April 11, 1963. According to police reports, a group of Rastafarians armed with spears, hatchets, and machetes set fire to a gas station as part of an attempted robbery. A skirmish resulted between the Rastafarians and the police who arrived at the gas station, resulting in the deaths of three Rastafarians, two policemen, and three civilians also on the scene. A separate account published in Public Opinion and supported by relatives of Rudolph Franklin as well as Syracuse professor Horace Campbell asserts that the violence at the gas station was the result of previous conflicts between Franklin and other Rastafarians in the area on one hand and the police and property owners on the other. Following the skirmish at the gas station, a police manhunt tracked down and killed the other Rastafarians that had been present at the skirmish. The Jamaican newspapers such as The Daily Gleaner published many articles which demonized the Rastafarians and demanded armed intervention by the state. The media also originally described the events at Coral Gardens as an uprising and were later forced to retract their characterization of the event by the Labour Party-led government. On April 12, 1963, which is Good Friday, the Prime Minister of Jamaica at the time, Alexander Bustamante, gave an order to bring in all Rastas dead or alive. Police and military forces entered working-class neighborhoods and Rastafari encampments to detain Rastafarians and forcibly cut the dreadlocks of those who were detained. Many Rastafarians were tortured and killed and the exact tally is unknown, but estimates suggest it was at least 150 individuals that were a target of the police because they wore dreadlocks. In 2015, Public Defender Arlene Harrison Henry submitted a report to the Parliament of Jamaica. This report detailed the investigation into the Coral Gardens incident and also recommended that the government provide financial reparations for the injuries, abuses, and debts that were caused by its actions against the Rastafarian community. In April 2017, the government finally made a formal apology for the incident and took responsibility and stated that it should have never happened. The government has established a trust fund of 10 million Jamaican dollars, which is about 78,000 US dollars. This was for the survivors as reparations for the incident. The government also promised to recognize Pinnacle St. Catherine Parish as a site with historical relevance to the Rastafarian community as a protected site under the Jamaica National Heritage Trust.
that Rastafari have gone through supposed to stick with their name. In the sixties, we never have so much care. We never have so much money amongst Rasta. But guess what? There was a love and there was a unity. We need to cooperate to what is why the energy together and to unite round the divine consciousness of the LCI and to love one another supremely. We have a responsibility and we have to make sure that this government is answerable to what happened to Rasta in 1963. And we say this without any apology.